Bom, recebi uma notificação aqui, saiu o vídeo da Digital Foundry. Eu achei que fosse ser algum evento ao vivo deles, mas não, é um vídeo mesmo, tá aqui, ó. Não vi aí, né? Vamos ver aí juntos o review do Xbox Scorpio exclusive, a final specs moment has finally arrived. Yes, I'm going to exclusively reveal the Project Scorpio specs in this video. But first of all, I want to emphasize how kind of unprecedented this all is. Now, usually I find out about new console specs from industry contacts, but this time Microsoft actually invited me out to its Redmond campus to meet the architects of the system, to talk through the specs and to get the whole story there. Now, bear in mind that Scorpio is going to be a Q4 console release. This is really, really early. In all of my years in the business, I've never seen anything like it. So let's talk about the heart of the system, the Scorpio engine as it's known. This is the SOC system on chip at the heart of the console that contains all of the core hardware, CPU, GPU, memory controllers, audio block, and audio video media processors. And well, well, here it is in person. And well, this is actually an early production Scorpio. chip straight off the production line. A really nice memento from my trip. It's a 16 nanometer FinFET chip produced by the giant TSMC. So about 360 millimeters square with 7 billion transistors. Okay, so let's talk specifics here and we'll start with one of the biggest points of controversy in the current gen console designs, mm -hmm. the CPU. Mm -hmm. Now, back when I did my Scorpio spec analysis in the wake of its E3 teaser last year, I pegged the new console as retaining the same Jaguar cores as the Xbox mm -hmm. One, but with an the Xbox One. Mainly because the Scorpio engine would already be big owing to the large GPU size. And also because, well, Microsoft promised eight CPU cores, which sort of rules out anything else. Plenty of speculation surrounded a Ryzen implementation, which I always thought unlikely, Ryzen, huh? but the truth is, well, mm -hmm. actually a little bit more complicated. Now, strictly speaking, you could say that I got it right. Scorpio does indeed use an evolved version of the Jaguar core. Just like Xbox mm. One, there are two quad-core clusters there with a total of four um, megabytes Jaguar. of L2 cache. No L2 and Ryzen. frequency has been upgraded from 1.75 gigahertz to 2.3 gigahertz. É, That's a 31% uplift. Microsoft though has targeted optimizations at the silicon level, aimed at improving coherency between CPU and GPU, and it has targeted lower latency as a priority. Now, if the processor cores can't access data from memory owing to bottlenecks in the pipeline, it effectively stalls. So increased frequency and lower latency are key Lá to the custom menor. CPU improvements here. CPU but there is more. Now, e at the coloca, front end né? of the GPU sits the command processor, which kind of takes the instructions from the CPU and well, processes them. And here's where things get really interesting. Microsoft's engineers have effectively made a hardware implementation of DirectX 12 integrated directly into the GPU command processor. A GPU será instructions on the CPU that would integrate the system directives to instructions are now reduced to just 11. Yes, 11. State changes that are also heavy on CPU are now cut down to just 9. Microsoft tells me that this custom hardware alteration should drop CPU rendering workload by half on titles built on DX12 renderers. Games like Star Wars Battlefront, Battlefield 1, Gears of War 4, and the latest Forza ah, titles, for example. Audio processing CPU can be CPU intensive too, é, and this can also be offloaded to the dedicated silicon on the Scorpio engine. Well, the APB, as it's called, the audio processing block, is actually the same core hardware as that found in Xbox One. Now, here's some good news. Spatial audio in the form of Dolby Atmos and Dolby o Atmos audio, for né? headphones is going Como to be supported for Scorpio, effectively adding a height component to 7.1 surround. As the silicon is unchanged, all Xbox owners, whether you're using the original one, the One S, or indeed Scorpio, will benefit from this upgrade. 
Next up, let's talk so GPU. Okay, so Our last year, Microsoft promised us six teraflop graphics hardware, a huge upgrade over Xbox One's 1.31 teraflops, and even Since an impressive teraflops? boost over PS4 Pro's 4.2, effectively meaning complete Scorpio dominance over all key parts of the processing specification. Now, I can confirm that 6TF has been delivered, no more, no less, but how they've done it is nothing short of remarkable. Now, regular viewers may recall that I came up with the notion of a very large GPU with 56 or 60 AMD compute units running at fairly slow clocks based on the kind of constraints we've seen on Xbox One, PS4, and of course the Pro. The truth is Microsoft has broken free of those constraints in ways I'm not sure anybody could have anticipated, certainly not me. So to cut to the chase, Scorpio only has 40 compute units. But these are clocked very, very highly, 1172 megahertz to be precise. That's up against 853 megahertz on the OG Xbox One and 911 on PS4 Pro. So compared to the new Sony console, that's an additional 11% of Radeon hardware, but a 27% boost to frequency. Combined, this gives Scorpio a 43% compute advantage. Next up, memory. Lots of controversy here when Microsoft promised bandwidth in the region of 320 gigabytes per second. Would they use GDDR5? Would they go for faster G5X? Would we see a continuation of ESRAM? Well, back in the original specs reveal, we thought Microsoft would opt for a 384-bit memory interface paired with 12 modules of GDDR5. I mean, you could actually see it on the motherboard render that Microsoft put out last year, and that's a render that turned out to be pretty close to final hardware. So what's the score here? Pretty much what we thought actually. 6.8 gigahertz G5 modules on a 384-bit interface, 12 of those modules in total, offering up a grand total of 326 gigabytes of yeah, bandwidth. Shower. 8 gigs of the 12 total is available to game makers up against 5 on the original Xbox One. So that's a 60% boost in available memory for games. Xbox However, One system reservation has also gone up. It's increased by 1 gigabyte to 4 gigs. So, Scorpio's dashboard, well now that can render at native 4K, something that wasn't possible on Xbox One S. Okay, so Microsoft has delivered, or indeed over-delivered, on all promises thus far. But part of the reason I was invited to their HQ to talk to the people who made Scorpio was to understand that this is more than just a collection of off-the-shelf AMD parts. There's customization here deep customization and a lot of it. So Scorpio is a mid-gen refresh, right? This actually gave the development team a key advantage they've never had before. They could profile existing Xbox One games, see where the bottlenecks were on the existing hardware, and before any silicon was even fabricated, they could use hardware emulators to see how this game code actually performed. And then from there, they could rebalance the hardware to achieve optimal performance. And more than that, once they had that final balance, they could actually customize key areas of the GPU to eliminate engine game-specific bottlenecks. In fact, I'm told that there are around 60 specific targeted customizations throughout the GPU pipeline. Again, this is unprecedented. Hardware usually defines software, but this time the Microsoft team could approach things from the other direction, optimizing the silicon based on the way that game engines and game developers are actually creating their games. The Aqui ele falou um negócio interessante. Normalmente os uh, você tem o hardware, aí os a software house desenvolve baseado na naquele hardware, né? A Microsoft meio que fez o inverso aí. Ela baseado no que as software houses conseguem criar, no como elas criam Ela adaptou o hardware do Xbox Scorpio. The question is, would this pay off? I mean, we were promised native 4K gaming here, something you wouldn't really expect in the PC space from a 6 teraflop GPU. Estão prometendo aí o 4K nativo, coisa que no PC com uma GPU de 6 teraflop você não conseguiria, mas a grande vantagem aí dos consoles, né, uma vantagem, é que a, a, eles se dedicam né, mais a fazer a otimização dos jogos. Né? 
Então, se você tem uma GPU no, no console aí de 6 Teraflops, para você conseguir a mesma otimização no PC, você teria que ter uma de 9, sei lá, 10, porque a otimização no PC, na maioria dos casos, aí quando sai o jogo também para o console, não é tão otimizada, né? Well, here's Forza Motorsport 6 running on Xbox One. It's 1080p, 60 frames per second, and pretty much one of the best looking games available for the system. Back in mid-January, production parts for Project Scorpio started to arrive at Microsoft HQ. These were cobbled together at Turn 10 Studio down the road into something that sort of resembled an early prototype console. The Forza engine was ported to Scorpio in just two days. And, well, straight off the bat... Eles comentou aí do, uh, do, do Xbox, né? Do One, aquele jogo que é o Forza, rodando a 1080p, 60 frames por segundo, um dos jogos mais bonitos do console. A Turn 10 Studio recebeu o hardware do Scorpio e em dois dias eles conseguiram né, colocar o software, né, colocar o jogo para rodar no Project Scorpio. Bah, it worked. It worked just out of the gate. Something that blew the Turn 10 tech team away. Something that generally just Deixou doesn't tend to happen né? this quickly. And not only did it just work, but it was fast brutally fast without the benefit of any platform specific optimization and here's a screenshot e a melhor foi gigantesca foi brutal sem eles precisarem otimizar nada simplesmente eles pegaram o Forza em dois dias eles conseguiram é, colocar na plataforma nova e sem otimização sem nada eles já viram uma diferença brutal na velocidade e no gráfico. Shot of the demo in action. This is taken from the Nurburgring GP circuit with the maximum amount of cars possible in order to stress test the engine. Good news is it's hitting 4K at 60 oh, frames per second. 60 frames per segundo, 40 em 4K e a CPU está sendo usada 66% da 5 Giga de memória RAM sendo utilizada. Effortlessly. Take a look at the GPU utilization at the top there, 66.19%. Now, I personally have seen this demo running on Scorpio hardware, and the utilization does vary. I saw it drop as low as 55% with fewer cars on screen, and it can go as high as, say, 70%. Disse que tem essa variação de uso de CPU, quando tem pouco carro na pista, cai por uns 50%, e no máximo que ele veio chegar foi de 70% de uso da CPU, da GPU. The point is that this is a straight Xbox One port. The only Scorpio enhancement is the resolution and the inclusion of 4K R assets. This means... Isso é só um port, né? É o que eu falei, eles simplesmente colocaram lá, eles não, não, não adaptaram, não otimizaram, não, não mexeram na estrutura do jogo para deixar melhor, o mais rápido, o mais bonito. Só teve o upscale né, para 4K e, e é isso aí. So that, yes, we will see 1080p Xbox One games running at native 4K on Scorpio, but more than that, the fact that... Então teremos os jogos do Xbox One rodando... Uh, 4K nativo no Scorpio. The hardware is kind of underutilized means that there's a ton of GPU power left over for making the game look much better. So I'm putting a video together based on my turn 10 visit, but here's something that could be improved straight off the bat. Zooming into the road here, you can see the same texture filtering we tend to see on Xbox One and PS4 games. And well, this is to be expected because it is a straight port. Impro Aí ele comentou aqui dando aquele zoom de 200%, ele vê ali uh, os probleminhas da resolução, né, do anti-aliasing, da... que é uma sugestão já aí para turn time para otimizar isso daí para o poder do Scorpio. Proving this is not a problem with Scorpio's GPU power and memory bandwidth. Now I've got some details coming up on how turn 10 dialed up the settings and how well Scorpio coped. So yeah, subscribe to the channel and look out for that. Now here's the thing, this is just one game, of course. But you know what? Based on what I saw here, the concept of the amazing looking Forza Horizon 3 running at native 4K30 at something approaching the PC's ultra settings doesn't seem outlandish and I can't wait to see what the Ele falando bem do Forza Horizon, que já é bonito e que provavelmente vai bater de frente aí com a qualidade ultra do PC 4K.
team has come up with for the inevitable Forza Motorsport 7. Now, I didn't see anything else running on Scorpio, but I'm told that the scalability offered by the new hardware in terms of running 1080p and even 900p engines at 4K is there on other titles, other engines. And in actual fact, Microsoft... Ele só viu o Forza rodando, né? Só viu o Forza rodando, mas já escutou de, dos, dos, das software houses aí que jogos que no Xbox One rodam a 900p vai rodar em 4K, vai rodar melhor aí no Scorpio. It is indeed aiming for 900p games to run natively at 4K too. Now this will take more work, but they reckon it's doable based on all the profiling they've done. But you know, there's actually more to the story here. I mean, looking back at those specs, the fact that Scorpio is running its GPU at 1172 MHz locked is pretty huge. The GPU design has features derived from AMD's Polaris technology, which, you know, in PC terms, is basically the Radeon RX 480. Now, como eu tinha falado aí, o, a GPU é baseada na Polaris da RX 480. Aí. Então, eles vão ter força aí para melhorar os jogos do Xbox One. This has 36 compute units versus Scorpio's 40. A RX tem o Computer Units, tem 36 contra 40 do Scorpio. It's a smaller chip because it's a dedicated GPU, not a complete SOC, system on chip. Max boost, 1266 megahertz, just 94 megahertz faster than Scorpio. So yeah, I couldn't quite believe that Microsoft has squeezed... A RX 480 é um pouquinho mais rápido ali, como deu para ver o clock. ...used that much frequency out of a console part. I mean, how did they do that? Well, I actually met up with members of the hardware design team and got some answers. So it turns out that uh, efficiency in the Scorpio design isn't just baked in at the silicon level, it's there throughout the entire box. So here's the thing, Microsoft implemented what it has dubbed the Hovis method, named after the guy who came up with the concept. What that means is this, every single Scorpio engine processor that comes off the production line has its own power characteristics, well, because every piece of silicon is ever so slightly different. Rather than apply the usual one-size-fits-all power delivery system, every Scorpio motherboard is balanced with its specific processor. It helps to keep heat down and ensures peak efficiency. Now, of course, this is a big processor and it still gets hot. So Microsoft spares no expense here in using a vapor chamber cooling assembly, very similar in design to the high-end coolers used on the GTX 1080 and 1080 Ti graphics cards. O cooler do, da CPU, né? Aí do, do Scorpio, vai usar é, o sistema de refrigeração das GTX 1080 1080 Ti para deixar o bicho frio, porque ele esquenta, né? There are no vents on top of the Scorpio console. Heat is pushed out through the back of the machine via a large centrifugal fan. So here's the bottom line. Scorpio is very fast, not just in terms of overall performance, but specifically in its clock speeds. Microsoft has tried to keep heat generation down as much as possible via efficiencies in power delivery and sorts out the heat that remains via a state-of-the-art cooling solution, one that I've never personally seen deployed on a mass-produced piece of consumer electronics hardware. This, my friends, is hardcore, but there's actually even more... Ele diz que é bem hardcore porque ele nunca viu é, uma, um sistema assim de refrigeração ser criado assim para um produto de distribuição em massa, né? de venda em massa. More to this story, much more. I'll be making more videos about Scorpio and its cutting-edge feature set as soon as I can, but what's clear from my visit is that the Xbox team obviously hasn't taken losing the performance crown to Sony lightly. This is the full force of one of the world's biggest companies focusing intently on producing the most powerful games console ever made. So yeah, much more to this story. Ele diz que a equipe da Microsoft resolveu se dedicar mesmo a, a criar um videogame bem forte é, para bater aí de frente aí com, com a Sony. E o bicho é much more to come. So for forte, example, hein, Microsoft forte. really don't want 1080p users to feel left behind. So all Scorpio games will super sample down to 1080p from full 4K. Todos os jogos do Scorpio serão não serão só 4K, né? Ele será super sampling em 
1080p, caso você não tenha uma TV de 4K, por exemplo. Né? And all game modes, high performance, high resolution, whatever, these will be available to all users regardless of their display. Now this is something that kind of wound us up on PS4 Pro, won't be an issue on Scorpio. Game DVR gets a 4K60 HEVC video upgrade too. And as for back compat, well that's another huge story in its own right. O DVR, né, gravar lá o, o jogo, também vai estar tá em qualidade melhor, vai estar tá em 4K. But that's all I have for you right now. Look out for more Scorpio stuff coming soon. I'm excited and I think you will be é too. But for now, as always, thanks for watching. Show de bola, merece o like. Já tem os comentários aí. Já tem aqueles os sonistas dor de cotovelo. O console tem exclusivo. Claro que tem exclusivo. E com certeza, se ele for forte assim e, e, e começar a desbancar, vai aparecer. Por exemplo, jogos cancelados como Scalebound. Você acha que eles não vão querer fazer? Ah, esse povo, viu? Porra, compra todos e tem, joga todos. Então é isso, hein? Jogos em 4K nativo, jogos antigos do Xbox One terão um upscale em 4K nativo, os jogos que aí 720, 900p terão melhora na, na, na qualidade, batendo aí 1080p, alguns 4K com frame rate lá em cima. É isso aí, parece que a Microsoft acertou dessa vez. Valeu, deixe seu comentário aí. E até o próximo vídeo aí.